Abby Corrigan. Welcome to the Biscuit Blitz. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> here we are on a Saturday morning. So before I start the clock, you know, Biscuit Blitz is, is five minutes with a, a, a Charlotte creative that we that inspires us. Uh, but before we dive in, I want you to tell everyone um, who you are, how long you've been in Charlotte, and, and what you do. So I'm Abby Corrigan. Uh, I've lived in Charlotte basically my whole life, but I just recently moved to New York. But now I'm back in Charlotte because of everything that's been going on. And I'm an actor. Uh, and just in general, uh, I like to do artsy stuff. Not good at anything else. So here we are. <laughs> At a high, high level, I might add. We're talking Broadway here. So um, <laughs> let me start the clock and then we will dive in. Now, as you just mentioned, you grew up in Charlotte. Your family's here. I was in a show with your dad. Your mom is a creative leader here. You, you toggle between Charlotte and New York because of your acting career, but I assume you still, do you consider Charlotte home for you? Absolutely. I really love Charlotte. I feel like when I first left, I was like, yeah, bye, I see it, you know, because everybody feels that way <laughs> when they're first leaving. <laughs> you know, they're like, I'm out of here. I'm going to spread my wings. But uh, yeah, yeah, peace out. But uh, uh, Charlotte has always, I've, I love being here right now. I mean, we drove down, my friend rented a car um, and she was like, are you coming? And because of everything that was happening, I was like, oh my gosh, yes. So my roommate and I, we came down here and we're just been hanging out at my mom's house. So <laughs> When did you come down? We came down about a month and a half ago. Yeah, yeah. And it was pretty amazing because <clears throat> two days after we came down, they locked everything. Yeah. yeah. So it's been pretty, we got really lucky and we're Has happy to be in a place where there's hardly any cases. So. Has it been surreal to sort of watch your other home going through the trauma that it's going through? from afar? I mean, what has that been, what has it felt like um, for you? Oh my God, a hundred percent. Like it, it, it really does, like, I'm not one of those people who thinks it's fake, but like, it seems not real. Surreal. Like when you're watching it, you're like, this is the stuff that they make movies about. And I know there's going to be one, Yeah. but it feels like, I mean, but you know, it's funny because like, you think you're going to be a certain person in the situation, but then you end up, you know, when something like this happens, you really see your true light. Yeah. And for me, that was like, I have to get out of here. Yeah. But yeah. I like really like respect these people who are like, I don't care. Like I'm going out and I'm going to like help these people. Yeah, for sure. So t talk to us about how um, all of this has been impacting your career as an actor. Obviously shows are halted, Broadway's closed right now, but are you still auditioning? I mean, what does that all look like for you right now? Um, well, I, I got quite a few auditions when I first got here. It was kind of weird. I had multiple, but ever since then, not really at all. But what I have been doing is I've been uh, doing workshops with my mom's casting agency, C&J Casting. So sign up if you want to do a workshop. Shout out to Noda. Yeah, exactly. Um, but also I've been t uh, Zoom teaching with kids, uh, the Gifted Organization, uh, the Gifted Performing Arts Organization in New York. I've been teaching them uh, technique class, acting technique class. So that's, that's been great. Nice. And so it, it, is that one way that you're finding that you're staying sane and, and staying creative and connected and collaborating with folks is through those classes? Yeah, I think, especially with kids, you can learn so much with kids, but these kids are so passionate about this that it's really cool. And they haven't had any like technique before. So I feel like I'm just trying to like, I wrote out this whole thing and I'm trying to give them everything that I possibly can. But I've been doing a lot of yoga now, which is like, I haven't done that in a while. And I'm like, wow, I forgot how much I love yoga. So yeah. that as well. <laughs> What's something that's changed for us as a society or as a community that you hope will actually stick around after we get to the other side of this crisis? Like holding things to a more, uh, more sacred value, like mm -hmm. going outside and appreciating like the earth that we live on, but also like seeing that some jobs can be done from home. Some like, especially for people with special needs, like they can see how like a person with a wheelchair doesn't have to go out and like bust their butt to do this thing when they could actually be doing just as good of a job from home and also being eco-conscious and like realizing like riding your bike to work or like taking a walk, uh, taking a walk, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. It is sort of like seeing our lives through fresh eyes in many respects, it seems. That's one of the gifts that's hiding inside of the, the traumatic nature of this crisis, it seems. Absolutely. It like makes you want to cry because it's like, 
we're seeing how, especially America, Americans, we think we're invincible. We just think that we can do anything and nothing affects us. Like people are like, oh, the coronavirus, but I won't get it, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I feel like it's, it's really opening our eyes to go like, wow, we have so much more than other people do. In our final 30 seconds, just tell us a little bit about what you think is next. I know it's, it's, it's like a crisis moment now. So <laughs> but tell us what's next for you. How long are you going to stay in Charlotte? Are you just sort of waiting it out? What, what is, what's the next chapter for you look like, do you think? Well, I think I'm going to hang out here until uh, I have to, you know, like I'm just chilling and I can tape from my mom's office, like, and it looks really professional. So it's better than my apartment in New York, you know? So. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I got to tell you, we don't love the situation, but we love the fact that you're back home with us in Charlotte for the for the time being. And so, you know, once the restrictions start to get lifted, I hope that we can cross paths, masks on, of course, six feet apart, but yes. I would love to see you outside of the Zoomiverse. Me too. I really hope so too. It's like, I just come on over six feet <laughs> apart. <laughs> Abby, you're so awesome. It was such a joy to talk to you. We loved having you at Creative Mornings. I've loved following your career and you have a huge career ahead of you. And so, that's yet another gift that's waiting on the other side of, of all of this. So thank you. Thank you. Let's cross our fingers. Let's hope I don't shave my head and then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Abby. Bye.